Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Amir Karam, board certified facial plastic surgeon, founder and creator of Karam MD Skin. I specialize in facial rejuvenation, which basically means I help people look as young as they feel. And today we're gonna to talk about a very, very popular topic, and that is whether or not Morpheus 8 is a facelift alternative. All right, so it's interesting. I have to give it to the company that makes Morpheus 8 because they have become a strong brand, a very popular brand in the category of radio frequency microneedling, which is what Morpheus 8 is. It's radio frequency microneedling. And there are tons and tons of devices in that particular category, but they have emerged as, you know, the poster child of that category and the poster child of things related to skin tightening and non-surgical uh, skin tightening and things that are basically, you know, being touted as potential facelift alternatives. Now, I wanna say this. The reason why a lot of this hope and expectation towards a non-surgical solution practically is simply this. If you don't have to have surgery, if you don't have to risk looking unnatural, you know, and we've all seen those unnatural looks after facelifts, right? If you don't have to risk loss of, you know, downtime and loss of economic, you know, whatever, and facelifts are expensive and all that other stuff, and not have the complications potentially associated with facelifts, like, all of it makes sense, right? I would rather have a non-surgical treatment over a surgical treatment if there was one. All right, so when a company or when practices start to make claims that these type of treatments are indeed an alternative for a surgical facelift, you can understand, and I can understand, why they become popular and why there becomes so much you know, attention and draw towards them, right? So no mystery there, no, there's, you know, from point A to B, you wanna get there in a shorter distance, you're gonna take that route, you're gonna take a shortcut. But here's the issue. As of right now, and I swear I don't think that there's ever, this is ever gonna change. I just can't get my head wrapped around how the technology is ever gonna allow us to achieve this. But if you understand what is happening during the aging process, it's the entire fascia of the face is starting to loosen. And that usually happens in response to perimenopause and menopause. It's like a hormone-induced loss of integration of this fascia and the face starts to slide. And that's where we see you know, the face changing complete shape, right? I mean, the young face is like a heart, it's top heavy, narrow down here, oval shaped jawline, etc. And then as we age, it gets heavy down below, and that's because the facial fascia starts to, to loosen. And another kind of visual analogy is like your face becomes longer, like a rectangle, right? Squaring, all that other stuff. Now, that's your face shifting, right? That's like your actual shape, it's not your skin. Because remember what happens, and I want you to try to understand this. What happens with pregnancy. Well, there's a placenta with a baby inside of it and it gets bigger and bigger month after month. What stretches in response to those two things getting larger inside of you is your skin, right? The skin stretches, it's elastic, it's what it does. What happens when you gain 100 pounds? The skin on your body stretches to the new foundation, the new shape. When you build a bunch of muscles and your arms get huge and your chest gets huge, etc., the skin wraps around that hypertrophied muscle and it accommodates and keeps it. It's an amazing adaptation. It's amazing what it can do. But it is not, in and of itself, the reason why the face is, is losing shape. It's not because of the skin. The skin ages independently, it has its own issues. It, it thins, it gets pigmentation, it gets pores, it gets you know fine lines and wrinkles. But the true shape change is happening at a much deeper level. Now, why that's important? Because when you are applying a device like Morpheus 8 or any other radio frequency or ultrasound or old therapy, there's thermage, these are all using different types of energy. When you're using these, these type of devices, and we're gonna just stick for a moment with old therapy, but we're also gonna just note that everything I'm saying has, has the same logic no matter what the energy technology is behind it. But when you're using this, you, what you need to do is you need to get down to the fascia level and you need to somehow tighten up the fascia. If you're applying energy from the top of the skin down to the fascia, well, there's stuff in between it. What are those things? Skin, top of the skin, epidermis, then you've got dermis. Then below that, you've got subcutaneous fat, which is, means sub-skin fat. Then below that, you're gonna get into fascia, and then right below that fascia, and fascia's thin. Right below fascia is like facial nerves and facial muscles and all that kind of stuff. The skin is like less than a millimeter thick, or about a millimeter thick, depending on what part of the face. 
let's just say a millimeter. The subcutaneous fat can vary depending on how young you are and where you are in the aging process, but you could have four or five millimeters of fat underneath your, your skin. The fascia is oftentimes a little bit deeper than that. Again, depending on how thin your, your face is. When you apply energy from the outside in the way of, of microneedling, which is using you know, monopolar or bipolar energy going through, you know, electrical impulse going through, and you're applying that energy at the skin level, well, you're gonna get some positive skin changes, right? So you're gonna get some collagen stimulation, maybe a little bit of tightening of the actual skin, all around the same kind of stuff that I talk about with regular microneedling, the same kind of stuff I talk about with like light laser resurfacing, you know, microdermabrasion, um, topical treatments, all of that's gonna create good changes to the quality of the skin over time if they're used regularly. But that's not what we're talking about when we're talking about Morpheus 8 and as a face of alternative, because again, touching the skin doesn't mean anything. What Morpheus 8, generally the way it's advertised and the way it's, it's uh, discussed, is applying energy at the depths of four or five millimeters. Now, when you put energy at the depths of four or five millimeters, you've gone through the skin, so it is, it is what it is. The skin's gotten its fair share of, of uh, energy, but what's deeper to that is that's wonderful subcutaneous fat, which creates that suppleness to the surface of the skin. I mean, it, like under, underlying skin, it keeps everything supple and full. What people describe, comment below if this, is, this has been your experience, but what people generally describe, and I've heard this from spa owners and you know, people who do it, as well as tons of patients, and I've got lots of videos on this topic on my uh, Instagram, and I let people just kind of give me their experience with it, is that there's a lot of anecdotal stuff about people losing volume in their face as a result of it. You're giving up something, but you can't gain anything because you can't get that energy down to the fascia level in a way that's actually gonna tighten up that fascia in a meaningful way. I mean, the nerves are right below there, that's one issue. The other issue is just oftentimes too deep. And the fundamental reality is when you talk to people who've had it, who are a little bit older, we're talking about, again, a person who needs a face up is not a 30, 40 year old. It's generally speaking somebody who's in their you know, late 40s and 50s and above, and they've done these type of treatments, it's like really no difference, right? And if the difference is, is even subtle, it's like you almost have to use your imagination to see the changes. So if you can barely see the change or the change is so temporary that in three, four months, I, I had this small owner who set up actually to do a vertical restore with me. She has a Morpheus aid in her own med spa and she does tons and tons of treatment. I mean, she's been doing it to herself. I mean, meaning like her technician's doing it for her for years, like, but she's doing it every three months. And she said, yeah, it gets a little bit better. And then it goes right back and then I do it again. I get, and she said, I'm just tired of it. I just wanna go in and get the vertical restore and have a proper treatment and not have to deal with this anymore. The bottom line is, it is impossible for it to have a facelift-like effect, even in a subtle way. If you're really young and you're trying to do this, I don't think you should be doing it. I don't think you should be doing anything that could potentially injure deeper structures, first of all. And I certainly don't think you need to be worried about, you know, trying to prevent these things. I think when you're younger, you don't think about surgery. You think about taking care of your skin, sun protection, using the right, you know, products, et cetera, using right active ingredients. And then when the time comes, you get, well, I guess if you come to me, you get a vertical restore, you get a fat transfer, and you restore your facial shape, and then you go on and living like a 30-something year old going forward again. That's the way to do it, as opposed to like doing all the stuff in between, like fillers and all this other stuff that really will not slow the aging process down, but just potentially take some risk and all for nothing. So at the end of the day, what's, what's important to point out here is that as of right now, there is nothing even remotely close to a facelift alternative. Threads, quite frankly, suck. I'm, I mean, I hate to say it. I mean, I'm kind of bitter at them because every day I'm fishing them out of people's faces as part of my surgeries, and they've done it, you know, over and over again, and it doesn't seem to do, do anything. And some of them are, you know, they, they're opting for the more permanent ones. Um, you know, the PDO, at least the ones, you know, they're they're really kind of to me kind of nonsense because they dissolve after three to six months and you're back to square one again. They're not cheap and they're not free of complication or potential complications. So that threads don't make sense. Filling your face, we all know what that looks like when you put a lot of filler in your face. That's not an alternative to a facelift. The idea of a liquid facelift or using fillers, forget about it. I mean, if you wanna really destroy your face, go down that road. Um, year after year, you're gonna find yourself looking like a completely different person. Energy devices have never been alternative. They've been around forever. I mean, 20 plus years of thermage and all therapy and this and that and RF this and now, you know, new devices. Every other day, there's a new one that comes out. They're not going to fundamentally tighten up the fascia. Even a basic facelift, like a, 
typical SMAS face or a mini face which is invasive and surgical, isn't really gonna give you a proper change, like the kind of change you actually want where jawline is firm and neck is great and all that stuff. You need like a real solid, and I think in this day and age we've come to the conclusion that the best lifts are the deep plane you know, types and the vertical restore is a deep plane that's more vertically oriented and addresses the lateral brow, mid face, jawline, neck, all in one surgery. You know, you've seen those results on this feed a lot, but it's gotta be a quality high level lift to give even good results because I don't want to just say all, all facelifts are created equally or that any facelift is better than, than a non-surgical treatment because there's some people who get facelifts and a year later they're coming back and needing it done again. I have tons of patients in that category of like one or two years ago, they get it done and it's like you can't even see the changes because they tried, they opted for like a lower facelift or a mini lift or some other thing. Bottom line is it's got to be, you know, in the hands of somebody who does it regularly, who are well trained at it or really, really good at it. And that's the kind of person you want to be in the hands of somebody who does it regularly and is expert at it and gets awesome results. And if you do it that way, you're going to get a really meaningful positive change. So moral of the story is Morpheus 8 and all of the other radio frequency devices that go deep are not gonna give you a face of alternative. If you're gonna use a radio frequency microneedling approach, which we have in our office, just use it for the skin only. I mean, just go superficial, get the skin improved, and that's it. You know, we don't go more than one millimeter in any case, and we treat the face and neck um, simultaneously. Usually around half a millimeter is what we use. If you wanna be mindful and, and smart about this whole thing and you care about not wasting a ton of money um, on things that don't work, because money is, is obviously a factor for everyone's you know, life and everyone's condition, you know, be efficient with it. Use, use it on the stuff that matters. Use it on your skin while you're younger and forever. You know, that, regardless of whether you have surgery or not, that becomes a thing. And then just wait till the time comes, you know, usually in your mid 40s, late 40s, um, early 50s, is the time when you would benefit from a surgical procedure. Get it done, you know, whenever you're bothered by it enough and you want to address and you can do it, get it done and then move on again and go back to your skin and, and focus on that. You don't have to mess with all that stuff in between. I think it's a complete misconception that those things actually do anything meaningful to ward off aging, slow down aging, or actually reset the clock for you, all right? All right, folks, I know it's kind of a bold take, but it's not a bold take. It's, a, it's just a truthful, you know, straight take. I'm sure I'm gonna get comments from, oh, I used it and I saw it better. I'd love to see somebody who has real jowling and real neck laxity use Morpheus 8 and show like a, a facelift-like result with it. Um, and, or even something that's even like, 80% of the way there, or 50% of the way, you won't find it. Even the advertisements that come out of different people's practices and stuff is not, is not that. All right, so always keeping it real for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you um, would like to comment, I'm sure you have uh, things to say about this, uh, this topic, drop them in the comments below. Share it with some friends and, uh, and family. Let the word get out. Let's, uh, let's feel empowered and make good decisions for ourselves and our bodies. Um, if you enjoy this type of content, subscribe to the channel. Enjoy um, the topic. And if you like any to, to learn more about these non-surgical topics or things that I do and don't like for uh, facial aging, peruse through our, uh, our library here and pick out some new um, videos that you haven't watched and enjoy. Thanks so much, Dr. Amir Karam.